Hello Internet, you've tuned in to the video of Grant, TVG here, and today I'm bringing you an Eluna EDH deck tech. I am calling this deck All In Eluna. We are going to go all the way into Eluna's mutate ability to try to win in one big turn. But what is Eluna? Eluna Apex of Wishes is a 5 drop, 2 generic, 1 green, 1 blue, 1 red, legendary creature, beast, elemental, dinosaur, 6-6 six, six stats. It has mutate for 3, Gruel Hybrid, Blue Blue, Flying and Trample, and whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card. Put that card onto the battlefield or into your hand. So Luna from its base stats is still pretty good. It is a 5-drop 6-6 six, six Flying Trample that can close out the game in about 4 hits. But specifically, we are looking to abuse the mutate ability to try to win in one fell swoop. For this to work, our deck is only going to have one non-land permanent in the deck. So when we mutate Eluna, our hope is to actually exile our entire deck and then win with our main win condition, which is Thassa's Oracle. Thassa's Oracle, you've probably heard this a couple times, is a 2-drop blue-blue creature merfolk wizard 1-3. When Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library where X is your devotion to blue. Put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. Basically, we're going to mutate, exile our deck using our last two blue mana, cast Thassa's Oracle. With the ability on the stack, we'll win the game, because even if they remove all of our blue permanents, which would be Thassa and Eluna, our deck still has zero cards in it, which will still cause us to win the game. This is a risky all-in strategy, but it's really cool when you do get to pull it off. And that wraps it up for our creatures in our deck. Again, just the two, Eluna and Thassa's Oracle. But how are we going to get to this win condition? Well, we have to go through the steps to get there. Our first step is our travel plans. We need a lot of mana for this to work. If we're to do this in one turn, we need eight mana minimum, and four of it has to be blue. So to do this, we need a lot of ramp. Kodama's Reach. Cultivate, Farseek, and Rampant Growth start us off. While things like Explore, Sylvan Scrying, and Secretia's Root give us a little bit more flexibility. And finally, our heavy hitters will be Pierce Whim, Nylea's Intervention, and Hour of Promise. Being able to search out any land we need is very, very important to us. Next up on our list is called Find It. We need to actually find our Thassa's Oracle in our deck and make sure it is in our hand on the turn we're going to combo off. To do this, we'll use cards like Worldly Tutor, Uncaged the Menagerie, Shared Summons, and Primal Command just to go through our deck and to find our Thassa's Oracle. Primal Command gives us a bit more flexibility on it, and it's also important to note that with Uncaged and Shared Summons, you do not need to have more than one creature in the deck because they say search for up to X amount of creatures. We also have some other utility cards such as Gamble, a bit risky but usually works out in our favor. Guided Passage, Drawn from Dreams, and Dig Through Time. Drawn from Dreams and Dig Through Time, just look at the top 7 cards, which is still a pretty good chunk of our deck to dig through. Finally, Guided Passage is perfect for this deck. Because we only have one creature, we're going to be guaranteed it each time we cast it. We don't really worry about getting a land or any other non-creature non-land card, because all of them help our strategy. Next up is Knowledge is Power. These are our card draw spells. Running things like Faithless Looting, Thrill of Possibility, Cathartic Reunion, and Pirate's Pillage, along with spells such as Gataxian Probe, Sleight of Hand, Ponder, Preordain, Portent, Real Spiral, Treasure Cruise. Whew, that's a lot of cards to get through. Next we have Leave Me Alone. We're actually pretty weak to creature heavy and fast aggro decks, so we need a lot of ways to protect ourselves. Ways we can do this include a bunch of fogs. We have running cards like Fog, Tangle, Moments, Peace, and Lull, along with Constant Mist. Constant Mist being most important because we can buy it back if we need a few extra turns to get our combo set up. Next up, we have a bunch of Kill in Pyroclasm, Earthquake, Sweltering Suns, and Blasphemous Act. Earthquake can also be a backup win condition if we need it, but that has rarely ever come up. We have some targeted removal in Rapid Hybridization and Pongrify for creature decks. 3-3 three, three beats are not the worst, but they are still something we should keep in mind. And Flood of Tears is a great catch-all, because it can actually help us reset our Eluna if things get bad. Next, we have a bunch of Hate in Vandal Blast, Ancient Garage, Artifact Mutation, and Hull Breach. Artifact Mutation being very good here, as it allows us to get Sapperlings to mutate onto. 
We're also running Nature's Claim, Beast Within, Curious Herd, and Decimate. Next up is the Kitchen Sink. These are any spells that didn't really quite fit into our previous few categories. These include things like Noxious Revival, Laws of Dead Plating, Honor the God Pharaoh, and Invade the City. Our mass spell is just another way to get a token onto the battlefield for Iluna to mutate onto. We're running Swan Song, Regrowth, and Arcane Denial. As well as Pass in Flames, Scapeshift, and Splendid Reclamation. Pass in Flames isn't really here for a combo piece, but rather just to give us a little extra utility out of our spells. Scapeshift makes for some explosive plays with our lands, and Splendid Reclamation is a great way to bounce back from some targeted land removal or mass land destruction. Speaking of lands, that leads us to our next category, Home Sweet Home. This is going to be our, all of the lands that we are going to run on the deck. I recommend running, of course, Island, Forest, and Mountain. You'll need a bunch of basics for the deck. Along with the normal basics, I recommend running at least one of each snow-covered land. This will be important for later on. We're also running each of the guild gates that are available on the team or colors. We are also running cycling lands in Tranquil Thicket, Ketria Triumph, and Lonely Sandbar. Steam Vents, Sulphur Falls, and Shiv and Reeves start off our dual land package, along with Breeding Pool, Hinterland Harbor, and Yavimaya Coast. Stomping Grounds, Cinderglade, and Spire Garden are great within our deck, along with Rootbound Cray, Carpools and Forest, and Temple of Abandon. Next up, we have some creature lands, just in case our tokens don't make the cut. We are running things like Dryad Arbor, Dwarven Mind, and Treetop Village, along with Fairy Conclave and Lumbering Falls. Blink Moth Nexus, Field of the Dead, and Scavenger Grounds round off our land package. Again, Field of the Dead is going to be the main land we're actually looking for in our deck. This card is a powerhouse in every format that we are able to use it in, which is why it's also good to have a split between the basics and the snow-covered basics, just to guarantee that we have the seven or more lands with different names. Having a free zombie enabler that's hard for our opponents to interact with is a great way to guarantee we at least have one token in play for Iluna to fuse onto. And, if worse comes to worst, Field of the Dead is also one of our backup win conditions, because if we can't combo off, we might as well just kill him with a bunch of undead zombies. And, that brings us to the end of our Iluna deck tech. It's a very interactive EDH combo deck, it's all natural, homegrown goodness, you will find no artifacts tainting up this deck in here. It's totally not a combo deck, wink wink. It's also stupendously flexible. There are so many spells you can fit into the deck that you'll find yourself, like, really tuning it up to match with your meta. You have so many options. It's also really fun. This is possibly one of my favorite decks I've had in the last couple of years, and I hope you enjoy it as well. As always, thanks for watching my video. Please let me know what you think of the deck down below. If you're interested in checking out the deck list, it'll be in the description box, and I'll see you in the next episode.